Okay, well, if we're good to go, then we'll get started here. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everyone to our 2020 edition of the Safe Tech Synergy Conference. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Shaw, I go by GEO, and I've got Shilpa here today presenting with me. And today we're going to be talking about the new data transfer tool and moving iTrack process flows and data. So before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. First, we would like it if you'd keep yourselves on mute. Um, and how, how many people are there? Do we have a bunch of people here? Uh, we've got about three externals, I believe, three, four. Three or four? Okay, so yeah, if questions come up, you should be okay to ask them, but you know, just in case so we don't lose track of them, it's probably best to put them in the chat panel or to click the raise hand icon. Um, also, make sure to join in to the Microsoft Teams conference channel uh, and to ask us how to do that in order to continue conversation around Safe Tech Synergy. Um, you've seen the conference schedule a few times today. Uh, the link for it here is displayed, itrack365.com, conference schedule. Uh, and of course, if you have more questions after the conference or anything like that, you can reach out to us through our support at neosystems.com site as well. Make sure to check us out on YouTube and LinkedIn. Um, yeah, the final thing to say here is that this session is a T300 session for a technical audience. So this is for people who are going to have a data and or programmatic understanding of the system. They'll really just help understand how the tables and the structure of the iTrack 365 environment is laid out. So now we'll get into formal introductions. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Shaw, software developer. I've been working on the iTrack product for seven years. A little background about me. I'm a chairman with the SAIT ITSD Advisory Committee, SAIT being a technical college here in Calgary where, where, we're, where we are based. And finally, I'm also a Microsoft certified professional on Dynamics 365 environment, and I've got two or three certifications in that now. I am Shilpa Sinapa, a project lead consultant with the iTrack 365 team. I have uh, been with the company since 2014. Um, I've been using iTrack product for at least six years now. My main focus is to uh, manage safety and compliance implementation for our customers to help them enable safety, a successful safety system. I am really excited about this tool because over the past few years, I've really struck seeing our customers struggle to move the data from one organization to another, specifically uh, form process or form types, so as we call them. Uh, so I've been using this new tool for at least one month now, and I do see uh, lots of benefits over the one. Uh, that being said, uh, Jeff, lead us away. On to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shilpa. So we'll get into the agenda real quick here. First, I'm going to overview the technology that we're talking about today. So we're going to talk about the XRM toolbox, what it is and the benefits to it. Then I'm going to talk about the data transporter plugin that lives within the XRM toolbox. And then finally, I'll cap that off with a little demo that we've pre-recorded here because I don't take chances on things like that. Um, and then we'll get into the business side of things. Shilpa will lead us through some of the benefits and costs regarding this tool, uh, the feasibility for it, if you can implement it today, uh, as well as a few use cases we think will be relevant to everyone to help get the creative juices flowing around using the tool. And then we'll cap it off with a Q&A session in case there's anything you require clarification or want to voice an opinion on. So first, the XRM Toolbox is a community-driven tool for the CDS platform. So it can actually interact with Azure AD and various other things, but we're going to be focused on Dynamics 365. It's designed by administrators and professionals in order to customize, configure, 
and ultimately extend the functionality of the Dynamics 365 system. And it has, you know, frankly, it's a valuable tool within the Dynamics community. Microsoft professionals will publish their own tools uh, on the XRM toolbox and distribute them free of cost in order to get them out in order to increase usage on the systems. So the data transporter is a plugin that lives within the XRM toolbox. It's an open sourced community plugin, which means that you can get it for free. It's pretty easy to acquire and it's updated and maintained fairly regularly. The last update being in January of 2020. Another key benefit to this thing is that it will interact with any data that you have within your Dynamics 365 environment. So in addition to iTrack entities, which are custom solution entities, you'll be able to use this tool with solutions that are not iTrack as well as CRM out of the box entities. Finally, there's going to be some quality of life features that we're going to go over in the demo in order to help you use this tool right away. We're going to be showing how to use the mapping in cases where you have differing parent records from environment to environment, how to use the filtering to transfer records between environments of differing versions, as well as how to use playlists which automate the transfer of multiple record types in order to solve a functional problem. So we're going to get into the demo here, which is up on our YouTube uh, as well. You'll be able to watch it through this PowerPoint. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Shaw and I'm one of the developers with the iTrack 365 product at Neo Systems. Today I'll be overviewing the XRM toolbox as well as the data transporter plugin in order to show you how to transport records to and from organizations that you have access to. Now quickly, the XRM toolbox is a Windows application that connects to the common data service for apps, so it provides tools for ease of customization, configuration, and the operation of tasks for really anything built on the CDS platform. However, today we're going to be looking specifically at Dynamics 365. So in order to get this tool, you have to go to the XRM Toolbox tool library and look it up just with data transporter. Once you look it up, select it, install it, your tool will restart and then you'll be prompted to go to the data transporter page. Now, the first thing that happens on this page is that you're prompted to sign into a source environment. This will be the environment that you're transferring data from. The target environment is the environment that you're going to be transferring data to. So in this use case, I'm going to be transferring an iTrack inspection from the iTrack 365 environment into the iTrack QA Sprint environment. Now, before we do the transfer, I wanted to do a quick overview of some of the tools and functionality that the data transporter provides. The first is the ability to look at individual entities inside of the transporter. In this example, I've brought up the inspection. We've got a list of all of the attributes that are available on the inspection. Now we have the ability to select and unselect attributes for transfer, and this is useful in a couple of cases. The first, of course, is just having attributes that you don't want to transfer, a thing like a description. But another use case is when you're transferring from a newer environment to an older environment, you can unselect attributes that are not available in order to transfer the record overall. The next piece of functionality we're going to be looking at is the filtering. Now, filtering is the ability to use fetch XML downloaded from a Dynamics 365 advanced find to cause your query to be more selective about the records that it transfers. Now in this example, I will not be showing you a fetch XML filter, but in the documentation we provide, there's a clear example of how to download one. Now the final thing to note is that once you have your file created, you can download the XML definition. As you can see here, it is the name of the entity .xml. And in this case, I was previously working on a risk matrix but we have a number of folders available. Uh, and for our inspection here, I already have files prepped. So once we have the files prepped, we have the ability to create something called a playlist. And a playlist is the ability to transfer multiple types of records 
from one environment to another. And this is useful for inspections, which are comprised of the inspection entity, the inspection section entity, as well as the inspection section item entity. Now, in order to do this, we're going to select the add configuration button. We're going to navigate to our inspection. As you can see here, I already have an XML that was downloaded with a filter for the checklist report inspection that we're going to be transferring. So I will highlight all four of these items. And here we see they've loaded into the playlist. Now, if I wanted to use this in the future without selecting those items, I have the ability to save the entire playlist. And if I were to reopen it, all four of these entities would load as shown. Now here, I'm going to select the create attributes, but we also have the ability to update as well as delete using this tool, which are functionalities that will not be demonstrated, but you can learn more about in our documentation. So here, we're going to transfer our data. Now at this point, we're leveraging a behavior in the tool where when we transport our inspection, Inspection sections and inspection items do not have filters on them and as a result are going to warn us that they were unable to transfer because they were unable to find their parent inspection. Now we can leverage this behavior by reducing the number of filters that we have to apply to our playlist. So we'll see the net result is that while our single inspection was transferred, so was only the inspection sections as well as the inspection section items that we care about. Now, once we give this a second to finish up, it will give us our warning dialog, and then we're going to go into the iTrack QA Sprint environment to go and review the inspection. At this point, we'll, here we are. So as you can see, we have inspection sections that were unable to find inspections that we did not transfer but this is the behavior that we were anticipating and that we desired in this case. So now that we have transferred our inspection, we're going to go over, as you can see, I've done a search for the checklist report in iTrack QA Sprint. It's not currently available, but now, oh geez, look at me go here, folks. Right here, sorry, checklist status report. So once we take a look inside of the status report, we can see that the inspection sections transferred over, the heading information transferred over as well. And when we open one of the sections, all of the items transferred over as well. So really, while this case was done for an inspection, you have the ability to transfer any and all entities within your Dynamics 365 environment. This tool is ultimately going to be useful for not only inspections, but checklists, risk matrices, and also form types. So that concludes our demonstration of the data transporter as well as the XRM toolbox. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned a lot, and we're looking forward to seeing you in the next sessions. And that brings us to the benefits. Um, as I said earlier, um, I've been using this tool for at least a, a month now, and I've noticed it saves a ton of time, mainly because it supports entities with uh, many too many relationships. You know, if you think about uh, forms, uh, inspection forms and incident forms, and form fields, especially when you think form contains a parent instance for which you're going to have multiple uh, children as to uh, form fields, in this transfer tool, we can represent the relationship between these two lists of entities. It's very simple. Um, as making two uh, tables and creating link linked record fields. Secondly, uh, simplified migration process. Uh, as you all know, the migration process can take up to weeks or months, depending on the amount of data we are going to be transferring uh, to uh, Dynamics 365. Uh, 
uh, let's say if we want to bring in all our historical forms into your production environment, uh, you know, we usually adapt like five different stages to do this migration process. That is extraction, transformation, cleansing, validation, and loading. Uh, so typically we would prep uh, our import data and then perform all the import in sandbox environment. And then we'll do the second attempt to import in the production environment. Uh, well, guess what? We no longer have to import in production. Um, when you have your uh, data in sandbox, we can perform, uh, we can create uh, mappings in transfer tool, as Jeff mentioned earlier, and uh, use them with the playlist. Uh, secondly, I've noticed a multi usage. Uh, this tool is not meant for just forms. Uh, it can be used for any data records in Dynamics 365. For example, uh, I have seen uh, some of our customers really struggling with the employee imports. So if you've done it in Sandbox, you can move them over to production using this tool. Um, secondly, employee positions or accounts, um, anything. Third item is multi-operation. So our previous tool was just meant to sort of like create records, mainly uh, form a process and update the same form process. So in this case, you can update, delete, create records, not just forms, as I said before, any records in Dynamics 365 and uh, inactive records as well. If you're not sure about uh, certain form uh, fields which you want to like, you know, hide them, you can also bring them over and um, as you see them in sandbox. Uh, there has been some functional improvements over the original form type transfer tool. Um, now it makes it move, move, moving data is way uh, easier and straightforward. I have personally used in dev to production and uh, dev to sandbox, especially for the records we're using workflows or business rules on just to make things easier. Uh, we did have a few cases where some of our customers were asking me, hey, Shilpa, why can't I just uh, move this uh, form within the same organization? So this, guess what? This tool does that. So you can move the form from sandbox to sandbox or production to production if you want to create a copy or a du uh, duplicate your inspections. And most of you guys have, uh, you know, very general first few sections which you want to keep it consistent with the other form process so you can move them over. Um, next, I'm going to talk about how easy the tool is to access. So, um, yeah, so the costs associated with this tool is nothing. Basically, the tool is a free tool um, and it will remain like this. There are a couple of things which you might want to consider donating to our MVP folks. Um, we want to support their continued development of work. Uh, so they have a PayPal plugin. I think you can donate uh, using uh, that button. And secondly, I have seen uh, this tool improve my productivity and saves a lot of time whenever I'm like uh, implementing Microsoft Dynamics 365 project. So hopefully it might uh, help you guys as well. OK, so how do you get your hands on this one? Um, first thing most of you will ask me is like, hey, can I see this to my, uh, this tool? Yes, it's a, it's a free tool, as I mentioned before, and you should be able to access the tool right away by uh, reviewing uh, HTTPS XRM toolbox.com and you can download the data transfer tool plugin. Um, some of you might be already uh, using this tool, uh, especially all the technical uh, team. Um, and if you need any help from us, we'll be happy to uh, help, help you in installing uh, the XRM toolbox and then uh, the data transfer plugin as well. Secondly, are there any environmental limits to this tool? Uh, I have not experienced any limitations yet. 
uh, as far as I know, you should be able to use this uh, plugin in both uh, on cloud and on premise environments. Um, I don't have all the information of the version requirements. We'll get that to you later if that's OK. And what are the next steps if you want to implement this at your company? Uh, so once you've installed the tool, uh, the plugin uh, should be installed as well. And this, the second steps would be to create uh, the uh, mappings, as Jeff mentioned, quality of life features, mapping, filtering, and uh, playlists. So we do have access to all the playlists. We have created them for you. So we can create the tool as a sort of package for you guys and uh, uh, bump them over to your team's channel uh, if you would like. And we do have all the documentation uh, as well, so we can get that over to you as well. Thanks for uh, joining us uh, with this session and uh, shout out to Kasim for being our moderator. Yeah, excellent. Cheers, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and got a lot out of this session. And we're looking forward to seeing you at both today and tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Thanks.